Hi, my name is Paul Sokoloff, and I'm a botanist here at the Canadian Museum of Nature. Today I'll be sharing some of my adventures from August last summer, where I had the chance to hunt for this unique plant, the hairy brea. This small member of the mustard family only grows on Cape Bathurst and Bailey Island, the northernmost points of land on the mainland Northwest Territories. Its entire global range, exclusively within the Inuvialuit settlement region, is shown here. The first herbarium specimens of this species were collected by Dr. John Richardson during the second Franklin voyage in 1826. It wasn't collected again for over a century until Jim Harris, an expert on these plants, tracked down the original collecting location in Richardson's journal and visited Cape Bathurst in 2004. Given the restricted nature of the species range and dramatic coastal erosion happening across the Beaufort Sea, the Government of Canada and the Government of Northwest Territories have designated the hairy brea a species of conservation concern and periodically check in on it. In August 2022, I was thrilled to be invited to join one of these trips, representing the museum on a Government of Northwest Territories-led expedition to check in on the hairy brea for the first time since 2015. After meeting in Inuvik, our team set out for the Cape and botanical adventure. This Harry Bray dream team was an absolute blast to work with, and I would happily botanize again with any of them in a heartbeat. Here, from left to right, is me, Floyd, our wildlife monitor from Tuktoyaktuk, Thomas, our helicopter pilot, Jim, our Bray expert, and expedition leader Joanna, a biologist from the Government of Northwest Territories. With the exception of Thomas, who flew himself in, our team and all our gear had to fit within the confines of this Twin Otter float plane, which, thanks to our expert pilots and Joanna's logistical mastery, had us safely to Mammon Lake on Cape Bathurst in no time. On the north shore of this heart-shaped lake, we established a base camp, which was home for the next week and a half of fieldwork, a place where we could compare notes, process samples, eat a warm meal, and recharge after the long, fun days on the tundra. Our first order of scientific business was to check in on the known Harry Brea sites, to check the status of these locations, and to familiarize ourselves with this new planty friend. Following inlets and crossing boggy tundra, we hiked from camp to coast in search of the hairy brea, and quickly found it at previously documented locations near the tip of the cape. On foot and in the air, our team scoured over Cape Bathurst and Bailey Island in search of the hairy brea. You can see our footprints and flight paths here. By the end of the trip, we had such a good sense of the plant's habitat that Thomas was able to set down the helicopter right next to the species. Here you can see the hairy brea sites from before our 2022 fieldwork. Between 2004 and 2015, this plant was found at 13 sites across the Cape and on Bailey Island. Many of these sites were near the coast, which is a reason for concern as the plant habitat continues to fall into the sea. Unfortunately, in 2022, we had discovered that two of these sites had in fact eroded away including Richardson's collection site from 1826. However, we did happily confirm the species was still present at the remaining 11 known sites and found 13 new locations, many of which are on the interior of the Cape. Along the northern coast of Cape Bathurst, we discovered that the brea grows almost exclusively on long strips of raised silty tundra running perpendicular to the coastline. While these strips are at the forefront of erosion, Smaller brea plants do grow on them further inland from the shore. Interestingly, the largest and healthiest hairy brea plants were growing in the large crevices that open on the tundra as it erodes along the coastline, or in other disturbed locations on the cape, leading us to hypothesize that disturbance opens up opportunities for the plant to access nutrients or uncompacted soil. The southern interior of Cape Bathurst, where we found multiple new hairy brea sites, doesn't possess the same raised strips of brea habitat as the northern coastline, but rather an elevated area with a patchwork of exposed tundra areas above the marshy mosaic of the rest of the Cape. Here, the hairy brea habitat is less open than near the coast, and the species grows generally smaller within large areas dominated by sedges and other upland vegetation. However, small plants here grow extensively within a large suitable habitat, which is promising for this species at risk. While the hairy brea was the primary focus of this trip, Cape Bathurst and Bailey Island are also home to many unique plant species, some of which only reach the North American Arctic here. We were happy to take the time to collect these species to document the biodiversity of the area. Pressed between cardboards until dry, these samples, along with the labels that include important collection information, will be stored as mounted sheets in herbaria in Ottawa and Nunuvik as proof that these particular plant species 
were present on Cape Bathurst and Bailey Island during our fieldwork. Given the Harry Brea's conservation status, our team also made seed collections from 20 sites across the species range. These seeds are currently en route to a seed bank at Kew Gardens in the United Kingdom, where they'll serve as an external backup for this threatened species. Thanks for joining me on this trip to Cape Bathurst. We would like to thank this incredible field team, the Government of Northwest Territories, Environment and Climate Change Canada, the Inuvialuit Regional Corporation, and the Tuktoyaktuk Hunters and Trappers Committee for making this trip possible. Enjoy the rest of the talks.